Oh man, this is so upsetting. I guess I don't have a choice. I feel like I'm about to scold my, my own children, my favourite kids, who did a bad thing, but I love them. But I have to do it, and it's so hard. But that is the truth of things. New cassette being album for crying out loud. Man, I wish it never released it. Okay, look, I'm gonna say that from the start. This is not a terrible album, but neither a good one. And it feels even more upsetting because the last thing I wanted to hear from Kasebi now, so far into their careers, is this kind of absolutely fillerish release. First of all, the cover art. What the actual fuck happened there? Because they've collaborated with the same artists as before, very talented people, but this is so weird an off posting for a cover. I have so many questions about what's going on. I guess they wanted to play around with a modern art emoji-esque style, but together it is so confusing and not appealing at all. I think I might like it better if that would be just a photo of that man. Very minimal, but all together it's a pure mess. Then the name of the album for crying out loud, what is it? Then some track titles. My favourite would be God Bless This Acid House. Oh, Some of the lyrics on the album as well. Man, a lot of it feels just so cringy. As well as the bad promo that went with this release. The whole asylum thing and in love with the psychodrama. Then this cocky statement about saving the guitar music from the abyss. That's an actual quote from Sergio Pitono. That's a very strong statement to make and as someone who generally likes Kasabian, I can say that I could believe it but years back. Not after the electrified release of 4813 or this album, which does indeed comes back to guitar placement, but doesn't save it or even make it an important part of the record. And I mean, does even the guitar music really need saving? I don't think so. There are a bunch of greater bands doing well at that field. Kasabian aren't even that much of a true rock band, let's be honest. They're obviously turned to more electronic once again, there's nothing wrong with that. I did love the 2014's record quite a bit. There's some of the best tracks, like on there's any other previous releases. Serbian never really had a fully great mate album from start to finish, yet they have very strong uh, single tracks that everyone knows and loves. So here they put their music on the spot of the electric lights once again, and instead of making it quite experimental as they could, they try go disco funk. And in my opinion, for me, it doesn't work. For me, Kasabian are about this dynamic, energetic, almost angsty and psyched up dancing. This album has none of that, or barely touches some of the dancing parts. But those dancing moves are very different. At this point, where Kasabian stand very proudly as one of the most talked about British bands, and after so many studio albums, they desperately need to sound new, young, fresh. And knowing their life updates, you could think that they will have an actual second breath. But instead, listening to For Crying Out Loud, I kept thinking to myself, man, they need to sit with that rest for a couple of years more perhaps, and find the inspiration, find the new creative muse. Not just putting everything in the final track list which sounded just decent-ish. Recorded in the studio with the acoustic guitar. I didn't even start missing Kasabian really. I could leave on knowing that they sit somewhere there in Leicester recording and creating something that will actually impress people. Okay, even if they don't want to sound new and young and fresh and they just want to improve their guitar making skills, the hit making skills. For crying out loud, this is a low standards record, even for Kasabian themselves. There are not even that much um, heavy singles on it to create the hype. Even Comeback Kit or In Love With The Psycho need about dozens of spin to get yourself on it and maybe then start enjoying it. I do enjoy those two tracks, but not any bit close to how much I enjoy some of the other Kasabian hits. I've listened to this album for about 10 times now and there are some tracks that I don't even remember at all. And with every repeat, um, I get surprised that they are on the record. <laughs> the opening track, Il Rey the King, tricks you with this guitar riff, guitar revival riff running through, but the awkward dance bit through the verses and this funky bridge 
they put you off. The chorus though is quite promising. It's heavily arena anthems aimed as well as any other tracks in this album. That is probably the reason why it sounds so cassavian, yet at the same time something that you didn't want to hear on the new album. Listen, it's absolutely amazing that you are such an important um, British music band and the place you've got, all the recognition you got, all these incredible live shows and your achievements, all your soccer anthems and uh, video game soundtracks. And I do understand that you won't give a single fuck about what people actually think about you and what music critics think about your music because of your ego and a wide fan base who will be happy with a trackless field mostly with the old hit tracks and just a couple of decent new ones. But Kisabin, why would you aim your new studio album to sound as arena as possible? Not even trying to make those stadium bangers actually good. You do it so shamelessly, you even put 15 live tracks on the deluxe version of the album with the only one new track in the track list. Are you kidding me? I could easily imagine thousands of fans, including soccer fans, of course, we're talking Kasabian here, going absolutely insane hearing those new tracks live, like 24-7, a very sing-along worthy anthem. But without this arena feel, without thousands of people singing along, this track is really weak, plus the instrumental is so messed up, especially that last noisy bridge But what is even going on with the guitar arrangements on there? It is the third tracks on the album, 24-7, and it already feels fillerish and continues on tracks like Good Fight. The passing never ends, god the mixing of this track is messed up. Psyche Funk of All Through the Night was quite awkward uh, sexual lyrics. Though, I do like Sergio's vocal delivery on this acoustic ballad. Weird 16 blocks that I always forget even exists. And the ending track, Put You Live On It. Waste It is slightly more interesting with this acoustic touch. But the usual lyrical simplicity of Kisabian and Tom Megan's trademark Brit swagger vocals are actually weaker points on there. Though again, it could work really great here in life, performing life, especially that clapping part by the end. So well placed and so well paced as well. Very arena and soccer game pauses um, aiming again. The new version of Comeback Kid track confuses me a bit with its uh, pretentious epic beginning and uh, funk edition, but it no doubt has a fun element to it, especially in classic Kasabian weird lyricism, uh, catchy chorus parts, and actually bright enthusiasm added to it. It's one of the better tracks in the release, truthfully. But we've already heard this track quite a long time ago, so it doesn't really sound that particularly new or shocking or innovative as it should, especially placed in between all those just fine tracks. Another interesting point of the album is, of course, the eight minute long Are You Looking For Action track was its mysterious dark disco vibe, danceable groove, fun chorus, psychedelic instrumental touch and this very extensive ending. It's a long disco track and it could be this song's problem as well. Plus it's lacking some good catchy lyrics. But again, it works great as a dance break at a concert or at a party. Because I mean, they know their formula really well and they know their crowd really well. They know exactly what they're doing on this track. But yeah, talking about are you looking for action as the good piece on the album and as the important piece in Kasabian's discography. It won't save the guitar music from their best for sure, but it saves Kasabian on this release as sounding the most experimental as they get on this album, unfortunately. The rock vibe though comes through on Blaster's Acid House though. God, the title of this track is... ugh. It's one of the better pieces on the album as well, but the chorus either sounds too old school to me or too positively pretentious. Um, I, I still don't really understand what I don't like about the chorus, but in the track I mostly prefer the verses and the spicy classic rock 
uh, bridge part. Last to say it house, it still isn't a hit. It's just a decent, normal Hisabian song. As a band, they gather a lot of people around them, loving their stuff and loving their live shows because they're very charismatic people and they have indeed an amazing live energy. We, as the Meanwhile on the Other Stage, we've been to a couple of the gigs and all of them were actually fantastic. But it personally saddens me that it lets them put out those filler albums and not caring that much about making their music sound exciting for someone other than just their die-hard fans or FIFA soundtrack lovers. For Crying Out Loud is again not a terrible album but I guess we just have to live on knowing that this exists in their discography and that they will probably think that this is the best they could pull off at the moment because they're all so famous now, so loved, so respected. They have all these arenas to feel with the hits and by releasing for crying out loud this brand new album um, they have all three or four new songs to add to the tracklist to mix it a little bit but guess what even your biggest fans they probably would wait for fire shoot the runner flood the impaler easy bumblebee empire my personal favorite track and all of your other bangers rather than this what do you think of for crying out loud what do you think is the main problem of this album and if you like this album if you do um share with us please let us know why do you like it what's your favorite track also don't forget to like and to share this video and to subscribe to our channel to see more album reviews we've done quite a lot of them already check them out. Also, you can follow us on social media. We have Twitter and Facebook and our personal pages. Everything is in the description down below. And that's it for now. God bless the Sacred House. Peace off. <laughs>